Here comes Nick Folk. And now he's going for his 13th all-time game-winning kick from 41 yards. Ryan Stonehouse to hold. And the kick. Good! Yes! yes! Let's go, man! Defense has set a key all week to get the drive stop. Sometimes it was sooner, sometimes it was later, but you got to stop. Hell of a job, leadership. Hell of a job. We can bring these young guys along, bring these new guys along. Okay, and we're going to get it hot. On the way on this edition of Titans All Access, redemption for Ryan. Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill bounces back against the Chargers. Our Amy Wells talks to him about overcoming adversity and leading this Titans team in 2023. Something's a brewing. Titans center Aaron Brewer is wired and fired up. <laughs> and hot in Cleveland. The Titans are 25. Eddie George is 50. So let's celebrate by reliving one of number 27's hottest games on a cold, cold day. It's all ahead on an all-new Titans Hall Access, which starts right now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derek Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? No! What a catch! Oh, Ryan Tannehill! Zach! Jeffrey Simmons! Dropping under pressure. Fires in the middle. Intercepted. Amani Hooker. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and another edition of Titans All Access. That's Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and we're so glad you're with us. After a big win, the Titans knock off the Chargers in overtime 27 to 24, led by Ryan Tannehill's 246 passing yards. He threw for a score. He also ran for a score. His performance outstanding. It was outstanding. And not only was it a special game for Ryan Tannehill, it was against the team that basically ended his season in 2022. So I had the opportunity to talk to Ryan Tannehill about that game, his long recovery, and coming back to the field in this week's Nissan Insider. You end up getting injured in the very first series of the game and you're carted off the field. In your brain, as you're being carted off the field, what are you thinking? I knew I was in bad shape. You know, when the, uh, the guy fell on me, you know, I felt some bad things happened on my, in my ankle and uh, went to the sideline in the tent and they're like, all right, we need to get x-rays. You know, you're fearing the worst. And um, went in, got the x-rays. They're like, well, nothing's broken. And uh, I was like, all right, well, I'll tape it up and let's see what I can do. Uh, came up short, but had a, had a good run there at the end to, to get a two minute drive to go take the lead, you know, with, the, with not too much time left. And uh, you know, ultimately that was the last game I played last year. At what point do you, have to draw the line and say, I can do this, I can gut this out, it's gonna be okay, and there's no chance. It's a fine line, <laughs> yeah. That, that has to go pretty far for me to, to be able to cross that line. Um, um, but being a quarterback, you're able to maybe play with a little bit more, uh, a little bit uh, further injuries than you would at some other positions just because you're not you know, getting contacted every play, you're not having someone push on you every play, things like that. Um, but you do have to be able to move a little bit and, and be able to protect yourself. Fresh start in 2023 for a lot of different reasons. Play fake, option, right side, Tannehill keeps, five, in zone. Yeah, okay! Touchdown, Titans! Ryan Tannehill! One of them is new offensive coordinator Tim Kelly. What do you like about him and his style? Uh, I love working with Tim. He's, he's straightforward. You know, he has a lot of energy up in front of the room, which is great. I think he, he works to engage the room. I think he has a great mind. He has a lot of great thoughts, a lot of new thoughts that, that we haven't had here or haven't had here in the past and um, new ways to attack the defense. So excited to, uh, to put those to work. How important is it for you and him to kind of be on the same page and to really establish some chemistry early? Oh, it's huge. You know, I think that's one of the most important things is for a quarterback and offensive coordinator to, to see things the same way, whether it's you know, knowing what a, a play caller wants to get out of a certain play. You know, there's, there's certain concepts where um, depending on what the play caller wants, you can, you can look at it a couple different ways. Is he trying to get a shot? Is he trying to just get a completion and get us back on track? Uh, just being able to talk those things out with him, make sure that, that we're both on the same page. When, when a play call comes in, I know, okay, hey, he just wants to get this thing back on track. He wants to get a completion or a, a similar play call might come like, all right, he's trying to take a shot here. If it's not there, then we can check it down, you know? So uh, it's a lot of nuance type things. If you look at the play on paper, it might look very similar, but by the play call, 
you know, you're able to know that. There's a new wide receiver in the room, DeAndre Hopkins. And I've got to ask you about him because I know there's a lot of talent on this Titans team, but he comes in with a bit of a reputation. Tannehill spreading out to the right, looking, firing downfield. There's Hopkins! Hopkins <laughs> makes the catch inside the 25-yard line. They will spot it at the 24. He goes out of bounds. Yeah, it's been fun. You know, I uh, I didn't really know what to expect uh, that on the field he's at, as advertised. You know, he's being able to, uh, to consistently make those plays for us and just getting used to his body language has been a lot of fun for me and, and where can I throw balls where only he can get it. What are you most looking forward to in the 2023 season? Getting back out there. You know, I think it's a... Uh, it's a great opportunity for this team, this organization, to go out and have a great 2023 season. You know, it's a lot of work that's going to go into it, but excited about the opportunity at hand. Coming up on Titans All Access, we celebrate the Titans' 25th anniversary and a milestone birthday as Eddie George plays one of his best games, and we remember it as he gets ready to turn 50. But coming up next, you're not going to want to miss what we're brewing on this week's Listen Up with Duncan. It's pretty good. Welcome back to Titans All Access, coming to you from the Bet MGM studio. Mike Vrabel once described Aaron Brewer as tougher than a $2 steak. And that's because he may not be that big, but he is plenty tough. He doesn't take stuff off of anybody. Well, and he also talks a lot, <laughs> which you're about to hear in this week's edition of Listen Up, presented by Duncan. Feeling great, man. You all right, baby? I'm hey. I'm sorry. Let's go. Feeling great, man. Bless. Come on, man. Oh, line on three. One, two, three. Do you. Violence all day, boy. Titans win the toss, elect to defer. The whistle has been blown, the signal has been given, and we are underway from Nashville. We're going to score right now. We got punch one in. Yup, 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 come on. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? They're going to give it to Henry at left guard. He leaps. He stretches the football. He breaks the plane. Touchdown! Tight! Go! Keep it going. Dominate, dominate, dominate. Come on! Yes, sir! Let's get it in. Play fake. Option right side. Tanny Hill keeps. Five. And so. Yeah, okay. Touchdown! Tight. Ryan Tannehill with the old Southwest Conference play. Best that man. Best that man. Yeah. Hey, baby. Oh, man, you're going to touch down. <laughs> Ooh. Tannehill play fake, looking deep. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? That's <laughs> right. He sure can. No, what a no. catch! Chris Moore at the 33-yard line with a defender hanging all over him. Put him away right now. Night, night. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we do this, boy. Hey, what we say? It's that time, boy. <laughs> Here comes Nick Folk. And now he's going for his 13th all-time game-winning kick from 41 yards. Right hatch. Morgan Cox to snap. Ryan Stonehouse to hold. And the kick. Good! Yes! 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 Mm. I'm talking about what? <laughs> I'm 
to the next. I love you, brother. Love you, man. Hell of a game. On to the next. <laughs> On to the next. The Titans are getting ready to head up north to take on the Cleveland Browns, and that's also the site of one of Eddie George's most iconic games. Maybe his most iconic game. December 17th, 2000, in the snow. We will relive it with you as we help Eddie George celebrate his 50th birthday. We call it Titans at 25, and it's next on Titans All Access. If the saying age is just a number is true, the number 27 is exhibit number one. Edward Nathan George Jr. started his NFL career nearly 30 years ago and ended his time with the Titans nearly 20 years ago, yet he does not look markedly different. This is truly amazing because Eddie George turns 50 this weekend. When you think of Eddie George, you think of this franchise's all-time leading rusher. You think of him never missing a game. You think of the 1,000-yard seasons, all the touchdowns and 100-yard games, putting it all on the line against Ray Lewis in the 2003 playoffs. Everyone knew that Eddie George was coming. Eddie knew the defenses were waiting on him, and yet he ran fearlessly, earning the respect of both friend and foe. Eddie George, he seriously worked. That's one thing that I saw, his work ethic. You know, um, as a young guy, that's great to see, knowing that someone like Eddie George, he can take days off. He can, you know, coast if he needs to when it's hot at camp. You know, when we're doing three a days and he's still out there running hard with the first team, not giving up his reps to other people, you know, seeing that, that was, I know, what the Tennessee Titans Foundation was built off of. Two years I was fortunate enough to play with him, I didn't see him take a day off one day. It's beyond ironic that the Titans are playing in Cleveland on the weekend that Eddie George turns 50. Cleveland Brown Stadium was the site of one of Eddie's most memorable games. December 17, 2000. Freezing cold, heavy snow, and Eddie George pounded the Browns into submission with 34 carries for 176 yards and three touchdowns. The 24-0 final score didn't tell the full story. Back in the state where he won the Heisman Trophy, Eddie was at his most dominant. Nobody wanted to be out there. It was miserable, but he grinded it out just like always and just put on a put on an exhibition of how to run the ball in, in bad weather. And that's how Eddie played. He was the he was the grinder. He would he would get every yard he could. And uh, that was a that was a great game. I remember that game like it was yesterday. Being that moment and watching this guy knocking people around. Admittedly, that those games were built for the ground game. You know, when there's when there's inclement weather and there's snow on the ground and it's just like you know people don't want to be out there's cold whatever else and you got a back that's as big as most defensive linemen, <laughs> that's an advantage. And just to watch him mauling people and nobody wanting to get in the middle of that in front of that dump truck, man, that was just fun to watch. Late in that game, the Browns wanted nothing to do with Andy George. I mean, he was guys were bouncing off of him. Other guys didn't want to come close to him. He was running through players, running through you know people trying to attack him with his feet. And um, you know, one of my favorite pictures of Eddie is one with him with the snowflakes all around him and him just wide-eyed plowing straight ahead. I, I'll, I'll never forget that day. He touched the ball nearly 3,000 times in his eight years with the Tennessee Titans. He helped make the Titans into winners. He spent the last 20 years representing the Titans with class in a way that has brought as much honor as did his outstanding play. There's not another one like him. Let's come out on fire and let's put it right in the mouth and don't stop. Let's, let's take it to the next level. There was so much about that team when they moved here that was right guy at the right place. And Eddie George was the, you know, the first guy to lead that way. Um, and I think the simplest way I'll put it is you only fall in love for the first time once. And I think when Eddie and Steve got here, you know, this fan base fell in love with those two guys and, and that hasn't changed. Eddie George is just a different cat. Eddie set himself apart by how selflessly he played on the field. He never didn't start. He never didn't play, no matter what was going on. And this is a big running back who was going to get the ball a lot. He was going to take a lot of hits. And the amazing thing about him was, no matter how bad he felt, he made the other team feel worse. Happy 50th birthday to the great number 27, 
Eddie George. Welcome back to Titans All Access. When the Tennessee Titans take on the Cleveland Browns on Sunday, they will be facing a familiar face in defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz. And to break all of this down, Mike Keith is standing by with coach Dave McGinnis for Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft. Yeah, Jim Schwartz was the Titans defensive coordinator for nearly a decade. And then he came back for a two year stint over the course of the last two seasons. So he's pretty familiar with the Titans offensive personnel. What are the characteristics, the traits of a Jim Schwartz defense coach, Mac? Well, the eight years that I was here, I worked with Jim Schwartz for five years as assistant head coach and linebacker coach. Was involved in a lot of game planning with Jim Schwartz, a lot of putting uh, playbooks together. So, look, Schwartz is going to lean on his front four. I'm just going to circle right here who the front who the, the front four, all of these guys here. See all these circles? It looks like we're in the Olympics here. All of these guys right here, this is the this is his front four. All of these dudes are who he's are who he's gonna be. How wide he is in, in, in relationship to the end of the line of scrimmage. Right. That's a wide nine. This over here on this side, Mike, this is a two-point wide nine. Here is a three technique that's on the outside eye of this guard. That's his base setup for his 4-3 defense. But he wants these guys to clean things up. For these two guys back here, these two linebackers that are his two guys behind the line of scrimmage, he wants his front four to clean it up. That's what his base is. So as we're looking, as we're looking here at the edge, I want you to see what's going to happen. He's in a two-point stance, so he's going to come. Now, this player right here, he is supposed to come across and block to Darius Smith on the outside. So the quarterback believes he's protected on that side. Watch what happens here because we know he's going to come. Watch where he comes here. Free shot at the quarterback, this player right here, look where his eyes are looking. His eyes are looking back over here to where he knows he's got to come to block. Takes a very, very poor angle. And so people looking at this clip will say, well, why would you leave a man wide open to hit your quarterback as dangerous as what Zadarius Smith is, who's lined up right here? Here's Miles Garrett. We're going to talk about Miles Garrett now as we start to look at Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is lined up over here on the right side. You see Miles Garrett? He's going to stand up. He is standing up right here. Now, you have got two players in place looking for Miles Garrett. These two guys right here are assigned to block Miles Garrett. Let's watch and see what happens. He's working right here on the tackle, but this guy is supposed to help him. He's supposed to help right here. It's what we call a chip. He's chipping on Miles Garrett, so you would think your quarterback would be protected on this down and distance. Here we go. Splits the double team, sacks the quarterback, Mike. That's what we're talking about. And the other thing is, here's the Darius Smith standing up in a two point, so he's got both of his big dudes on the same side of the line of scrimmage. He will move his people around to take advantage of blocking schemes. One, two, quarterback down, ball turns over, Cleveland. That's what we're talking about with Jim Schwartz, but it all predicates his defense on his front four being able to beat any blocking scheme you want to put up. Coach Dave McGinnis taking us beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. We've got more Titans All Access coming up right after this. On Tuesday, Titans quarterbacks Ryan Tannehill and Will Levis visited with children and the staff from the Covenant School as part of T-Rack's famous game show. The show visits schools during the fall, talking about the importance of fueling up to play 60. It's time for the decision of the week, brought to you by Hughes and Coleman. The Titans' decision to insert Dylan Radens at left guard early in Sunday's win over the Chargers proved crucial. Just nine months removed from a serious knee injury, Raiden saw 53 snaps in his first game action, and while he wasn't perfect, he helped stabilize the Titans' offensive line by solidifying the left side of the offensive line. Choosing to put in Dylan Radens in the game at left guard is our Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Mike Keith, it's time for the Seat Geek Keys. And the first one is interesting to me. King Henry and Shake for 30 plus. Well, King Henry is obviously Derrick Henry. Okay. And Shake is Tajay Spears because he's got that shake. What we want to see again this week in Cleveland, 30 plus carries combined for the two. 
They had 33 last week in the win over the Chargers. If they can get 30 plus carries between those two players, number 22 and number 32, that's really good for the Tennessee Titans. All right, Mike Keith, key number two, hit me with your best shot. Yeah, shot plays. That's what we're talking about. Titans had a 70 yard completion, Tannehill to Traylon Burks, a 49 yard completion, Tannehill to Chris Moore. They need to see more of those kind of plays because when you run the play action offense and you have the runners like they do in Derrick Henry and Tajay Spears, the bottom line is those one on one opportunities are open down the field. They shorten drives, make it easier to go get touchdowns. You got to hit the shot plays. Hit me with your best shot, Titans, coming up this Sunday in Cleveland. All right, and finally, key number three is defense in concert. In concert. You want the entire defense on the same page. You want the defensive line and the secondary and the linebackers all where they need to be. If this defense will do this and not give up big plays and not allow a quarterback like Deshaun Watson to escape a rush, if they keep everything in front of them and play responsibility, this defense is good enough that it is going to be hard to score touchdowns against them. All 11 in concert on defense for the Titans Sunday at Cleveland Brown Stadium. It's going to be a great game. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Titans and the Browns this Sunday, noon Central Time. 11 a.m. is when Titans Countdown hits the air on the Titans radio station of your choice on the network. We invite you to pick yours and to listen to the coverage. Dave McGinnis, Rhett Bryan, also Ramon Foster, and myself, Mike Keith, with the call this Sunday, Titans and the Browns from Cleveland. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. For Amy Wells, I am the aforementioned Mike Keith. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you 